iPhone SE3 battery tips. This phone has a very small battery. It is about 10% bigger than the iPhone SE2, but it's about 25% smaller than the iPhone 10. So let's start with a nice quick win here in the settings app. Open up the settings app, scroll down and tap on privacy, and then scroll all the way down to analytics and improvements, tap on that. Share iPhone analytics is on at the top and there are all these other switches which may be on on your iPhone. Let's turn it off the top and magically the other ones disappear as well. If you're not concerned about this, well, you probably should be because there's a lot of data being gathered all the time and then sent to Apple for their analysis and other third-party app developers, and that uses a lot of battery. If you wanna see just how big these files can get, you can look at analytics data, and you're gonna see a lot of entries. Now, there's not a ton of entries on this phone. This is fresh out of the box, so the things we're talking about are on by default or off by default, so just keep an eye on that. Next up, tap back, upper left-hand corner of the screen, back one more time, and now we're back on the privacy section. Scroll all the way up to the top now and tap on location services. Location services is gonna show a list of your apps and there are a few different things that might be displayed to the right of them. It's gonna be never, while using, always. And there's a couple other ones yep. too, occasionally that'll appear depending on the app. We just didn't recommend being intentional about which ones you want to leave on, and we're not telling you to turn this off entirely because we're not crazy. Yeah, also look out for the word always. That means this app can access your location all the time, even when you're not using it. So Facebook, for example, do you want Facebook to have access to your location all the time, even when you are not using it? Right, and the point is, I mean, obviously no, right, Mark, sorry. But the point of this is that if it has access to your location all the time, it also has access to your battery all the time. Do you want Facebook to have access to your battery all the time? Probably so, not. Let's tap on Facebook, get some options here, never ask next time or when I share, or while using the app. Most people while using the app will be fine. Also keep an eye here, precise location. It'll be more specific when this switch is on. Does it just need your general location? Probably. It could be a privacy issue actually, because this is giving third-party app developers access to your precise location, possibly all the time. Uh-oh. But precise location is also gonna use more battery life yep. because the closer it zooms in on you, the more battery it uses. Yeah, so let's turn that switch right off. Precise location though, for Google Maps, for Apple Maps, leave it on. Mm -hmm. Let's tap back, and then let's tap on system services below your list of apps. And we have a whole bunch of stuff turned on right now. We're gonna recommend turning off most of it. So let's go through all of these real quick. Apple Pay Merchant Identification off. off. Cell Network Search, turn it off unless you're going to different countries, turn it off. Compass Calibration, if you use Google Maps and you wanna know exactly what direction you're pointing, with like there's a little blue arrow, right? It can be it can be useful like when you're in a city and you don't know the exactly. streets very well and you wanna be make sure you're walking in the right direction so you don't head five blocks in the wrong direction. That's when leaving the switch on can be helpful. Most of the time, not so Right, helpful. that's, that's the, the best reason to leave it on if you yep. use Google Maps. Device management off. Emergency calls and SOS, yes. Leave that one on. They'll still get your location if you turn it off, but it won't be as precise. Right. Find my iPhone on. Fun fact about Find My iPhone, if it's off and you lose your phone and you have Apple Care Plus, they'll say you're tough luck. Yep. Yep, won't cover it, gotta be on. HomeKit, off. Yep, location-based alerts, suggestions, off, off. Motion calibration distance, off. Networking and wireless, off. Go into different countries, I don't think so. Yep. We got a pop up here, location for networking and wireless. Turning off location for networking and wireless may affect Bluetooth and Wi-Fi performance. It almost certainly won't. Yep. We'll tap turn off there. Setting time zone, unless you're traveling through time zones all the time. Yeah, what's the uh, point? You don't really need that turn one. Turn it off. Share my location, if that's a feature that you use, leave it on. Yeah. If it's not one you use, you can go ahead and turn that off. System customization, turn that one off. It's not like you can't just customize your iPhone now, it'll be fine. Significant locations. Yeah, I'll tap on that next. I'll enter my passcode, super secure. Significant locations, top of the screen, turn that switch right off and then tap turn off. Right, not really a privacy problem because Apple's really good with privacy but it is a battery drainer, that is for sure. We're gonna talk about some 5G tips next, but first we wanna talk about a significant location to us, our members list. You ever seen this list that's going across the screen right now? I mean, we look at it all the time because we really value all the members that have joined our channel. We've got some Super Davids now. David O'Brien, our newest Super David, really appreciate you and welcome. And then Larry Nicholson, of course, not related to Jack, but also a Super David. I don't think he's related to Probably Jack not. anyway. We could ask him. There's a lot of Nicholsons out there, you know. Let's get to those 5G tips first. Why should people be concerned about 5G and battery life? 5G isn't as well built out as 4G is, so the signal strength isn't gonna be as high. 
the more work your iPhone has to do to maintain a connection to the cell network, the more battery it uses. Also, it's a different chip. Mm -hmm. It's a newer chip. It's not Whoa. as battery efficient as the 4G chips are. Do you, may I think, I, must I, think I continue? That's a, that's a good sell. So we gotta go to the cellular section of the settings app, tap back, upper left hand corner of the screen. Before we do, another quick tip, turn off the switch next to iPhone analytics and routing and traffic. More product improvement stuff, let Apple deal with that. I thought we were talking about 5G. Uh, we're talking about 5G okay. now. Tap Keep. back again, tap privacy, upper left hand corner of the screen, and back to the main page of settings. There we go. Scroll up and tap on cellular, then tap cellular data options and then tap voice and data. So by default, it's set to 5G auto and that might be the best setting for most people. It might not be though. If you're driving in your car and you notice, for instance, that Apple Music or Spotify cuts out, look and see if 5G is on. Switch it to LTE and your problem will be solved because 5G is a lot of hype right now. Mm -hmm. Let's also tap back and let's also tap data roaming and turn that on. Be careful of this. But if you have Verizon, for instance, in the United States, this should be on. This might actually help your battery because your phone will be connecting to a larger pool of towers and Verizon doesn't have roaming charges. Mm -hmm. Next up, we're going to the battery section of the settings app. Seems appropriate as this is a battery tips video. Tap back to experts. cellular, Sorry, upper left-hand corner of the screen, back to settings, scroll down and tap on battery. It is one above privacy. So. We're gonna tap on battery health. You know what, I just, let's go back one page there, David. People who think that the iPhone 10 is better, mm -hmm. I haven't seen this battery percentage yeah, button in a long time. Let's Bang, turn. let's do it for spite. Yeah. Take that iPhone 10 users there's, and there's a throw back. Yeah. Tap on battery health and make sure this switch next to optimized battery charging is on. I'm happy to see that it is on by default. Yes, and it should be. Battery health, 100% maximum capacity, pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Let's go back to the main page of settings for our next tip. We're gonna scroll up and we're gonna tap on notifications. So here is a list of the apps on your iPhone. Which ones do you want sending you notifications? What types of notifications do you wanna receive? It's up to you. You should be intentional, just like location services. If you don't need to get notifications from an app, turn this off because your phone's gonna be waking up less. It's gonna be fewer connections. Yep. I've already sold it. Yes. Especially, this was an issue back with Clubhouse when that first launched. I get the Clubhouse <laughs> notifications all the time. Fortunately, that's kind of died off. If there is an app that's especially annoying for you, tap on it here. Facebook again? Facebook again. Sorry, Facebook. It's the right thing to do. You can turn off all notifications like that. Yeah. Or you can do a little customization here and kind of cut down on the number of notifications that you receive from the app. Right. For instance, sometimes if I don't want to be annoyed by the fact that I have 9 billion unread emails, mm -hmm. you can go to mail and just turn off the badge. Turn off badges, there you go, problem yeah, solved. That's a good tip for me, I've got like 44,000 of mine. There you now. go. For our next tip, we're gonna go back to the main page of the settings app. Once again, tap on general, and then tap on background app refresh. Background app refresh allows apps that are in this list to download new content in the background of your phone even when you're not using it. So, as you can imagine, this will use battery life what you wanna be, I've, this is the word of the day, intentional. Mm -hmm. Set your intention for these apps. Do you want Facebook to be able to download new content in the background? Probably not. I don't. Because it could be downloading a lot of stuff mm. and it will work whenever you open the app. Yep. So it's not like you're really gonna see a difference here. Wants to leave on messaging apps, possibly reminder apps. Perhaps. Messaging apps is really the big one. You want those messages loading up and just being there. Right, or maybe a news app. Mm -hmm. If you travel on the subway through places with no service, leave that one on. That's yeah. a good use for it. Yeah, but as you can see, these are all on by default. So as you said, be intentional. One other thing to look out for here, scroll to the very top, tap on background app refresh. Right now it's using Wi-Fi and cellular data. We recommend just doing Wi-Fi. Yep, not just for the data usage, which people with unlimited plans are now typing. I have an unlimited plan, you jerks, and slow down. Let's step back to the main page of settings. Once again, settings, we're gonna scroll down and tap on accessibility, just a few below general there. Tap on motion. Reduce motion, we recommend turning that switch on. So now if I press the home button, you can kind of see the animation a lot less stylish there, just kind of fades out. It's a bit jarring at first, I will say I've used this before, you get used to it and then eventually you don't even know that it's on, so. Yeah, and honestly in the list of things that are 
going to make the most difference on your phone, this one's lower on the yes. list. Yeah. But it is a tip nonetheless. Let's open up the settings app once again. Tap back to accessibility and then tap display and text size. So let's scroll down, talk about reduced white point. Reduced white point lowers the brightest of the bright whites on your phone just a little bit. You probably won't notice a difference, but again, it's kind of like a little dark mode. Yeah, so if you look at the camera right now, you can kind of see the... Oh, that's a crazy amount, yeah. but we're not crazy. We're not saying to, to leave it like that. Yeah, so 50% is you know generally pretty good. Yeah, and I mean, if you even back it off to, to less than that, because now, right now, the camera brightness, we're not gonna change it right now. Right now, the brightness of this phone is actually set pretty low. Mm -hmm. We could still turn it up and it would get brighter. We're not doing that because it'll change the overhead camera and we don't wanna screw up this video. Yep, so we're gonna turn that switch off, but this is also a really good feature for at night and the display at the lowest brightness is sometimes too bright when you're in a dark room in bed, so useful yep. feature there too. That's right. One below reduced white point is auto brightness. Apple even says turning off auto brightness may affect battery life. How? Because if you have the display really high and you leave it on high all the time and then that can drain the battery. That's right, but we have it off. Why? Because we're recording a video for yep. you right now and we don't want the screen to be getting brighter and darker. It's hard enough to follow yeah. us. They say save the best for last. This is in the last. This is in the last. Save the best for next. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and tap on mail. Tap accounts and then tap fetch new data. By default, it is set to push. We are gonna turn that switch right off. Yeah, push means that your iPhone maintains a connection to the email server and constantly asks, is there mail, is there mail, is there mail? Fetch, you decide how often your iPhone checks to see if there's new mail. We do have a recommendation here. I mean. I think we're a little different on this, David, mm. but I'm an every 15 minutes person. Sure, yeah. David, I think, is a little more comfortable with every 30 minutes. Yeah, I don't do a lot of emailing on my phone. Also, anytime you open the mail app, it will fetch your new emails for you. So if you want to just check them, you, know, you can just check them anytime. Right. You don't need to wait the 30 minutes. Some people think, oh, is this a real tip? But actually, Apple built this one into low power mode, saying that turning off push will save battery life. It's one of the big ones. It's always been big. Many people are saying it's a big battery tip. Next up, we're going to the home screen for a battery tip, and that is to remove unnecessary widgets. Widgets are like mini apps. A lot of them maintain a connection to location services, for instance, or the internet to be refreshing. They're running. Yep. Stop them if you don't need them. And by default, Apple sets up these two smart stacks in your home screen, which I think look kind of bad and aren't super engaging. So to remove a widget, press and hold on the widget. You can tap remove stack, tap remove, gone. We'll see you later. And you're going to keep the uh, weather widget there. Yeah, I like the weather widget. Yeah, I like that it's 43 degrees too. Leave a comment below. How hot is it where you live? Those are some iPhone SE3 battery tips. Leave us a comment down below if you just got this phone. Let us know what you think about it. We're not super stoked on this phone. Yeah, well, I took it out of the box and the 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 size is nice. I really liked the just this is the back part mm -hmm. here. But that was pretty cool looking. Kind of a blood red. Yeah. Like raised by wolves. It's a nice, it's a nice stylish phone there for sure. Unfortunately, the front is kind of crappy. Yeah. Right? It's not very good. So yeah, not super exciting. What do you think? And please subscribe to this channel. Help us grow. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.